Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We're given that x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. And we're supposed to evaluate x to the 7th power plus 1 over x to the 7th power. I'll be presenting three methods. And I know some folks are saying that I present very many methods to keep the videos longer and, you know, especially start with the most painful method, which is kind of obvious. It's not always obvious to everyone. First of all, everybody comes from different backgrounds. I know some of you guys are very capable. You're well-versed in math. And these uh, solution methods are very easy for you. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to present three methods. And the purpose is to show the beauty and elegance of math Math is fun and different methods teach different things to different people. So everybody um, benefits from different methods. Anyways, I talk too much again. So in order to make people not complain about it, I'll get started. First method. Okay. First method. My first method is basically uh, looking uh, at this expression. I want to get to the seventh power. Obviously, you can raise both sides to the seventh power. I think that will be the fourth method. You can definitely do that. I haven't tried it, but I believe it will work. But you will get some other powers in the meantime. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to build up to seventh power. First step, I'm going to take this and raise it to the third power. I don't know why I start with the third power, by the way, but it's kind of fun. For this one, I want to use the identity a plus b quantity cubed. And remember, I gave you this identity before. You know this from binomial theorem, but I like this version. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. Awesome. This kind of puts it in a more organized fashion and especially for algebraic manipulations like this, very, very helpful. So I'm going to start off with x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus now 3ab. This is the beauty of it, like 3 times x times 1 over x. They're going to cancel out. So we're going to get 3 from here, multiply by a plus b, which is x plus 1 over x. Now, I know that x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. Therefore, uh, if I cube it, it's going to be 1 again. My goal is to find x cubed plus 1 over x cubed from here. And I end up with 3 times 1, which is a 3. Great. So from here, we get the following. x cubed plus 1 over x cubed is equal to negative 2. That's the first thing I would need to use. Let's keep it at that. Obviously, th this is a, there's a 1b method which you can... Square this and yet x to the 6th power, and you could probably do that. I haven't planned it, that's why I'm just going to go with the plan. So, anyways, but that's an alternative. Uh, x plus 1 over x, I want to square this now, and when I square this, you know, with the formula, I get the following, don't I? It's 2 times x times 1 over x, but I didn't write it. Okay, so now I know that this is 1, and I want to find the sum of the squares, but that's a negative quantity, and that kind of shows you that x is not real. It is complex. Okay, so we got those two values. What am I going to do with that, right? I'm going to take x squared plus 1 over x squared and square it one more time. Now, let me tell you what my goal is. I got x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, and I want to get x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth, and I want to, boom, multiply those together. And from there, I'm hoping to get x to the seventh plus 1 over x to the seventh. And then you actually get that. I checked it for you. So now if you square this expression, you're going to get the following. Just like the formula a plus b quantity squared, a squared, you know my version, is b squared plus 2ab, but 2ab is always uh, 2 because um, they're reciprocals. Great. So now I do know that x squared plus 1 over x squared is equal to negative 1. So I can just plug it in. That gives me 1 when squared. Don't forget that. And x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth plus 2, uh-oh, we got negative 1 again. That's interesting, right? You're raising these guys to another higher powers, and you keep getting negative 1. That's interesting. Well, x is complex. What can I do? So now we got the fourth powers. We got the third powers. Let's go ahead and put it together. All right. So now I'm going to just multiply them. I'm not even thinking about an expansion formula. I'm just multiplying them because this is going to be fun. All right. When you multiply these things, obviously, you're just going to use distributive property. You're going to get x to the seventh power. Now, when you multiply x to the fourth by 1 over x cubed, you're going to get the x, to, right? 1 over x to the fourth times x cubed. This is going to give you 1 over x. Cool. And finally, when we multiply the reciprocals, we're going to get 1 over x to the seventh. Now, remember, x to the third plus 1 over x to the third is negative 2. So this is negative 2. 
and this is negative 1. The product is positive 2, so we're going to get 2 equals x to the 7th plus 1 over x to the 7th plus x plus 1 over x. But x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. Great. So I can just replace it with 1, and that gives me 1. Great. Everything is 1, well, or negative 1, or 2, or negative 2. Anyways, x to the 7th plus 1 over x to the 7th from here is just going to be 1. That's interesting. We had the sum x plus 1 over x equals 1. We raised both of these to 7th power and added them again, but we still got the same answer. Great. Did I say I'm going to present two methods? Uh, looks like I'm going to present three methods. I don't know what I said. I don't remember. Anyways, this is the second method. I hope you don't mind. The second method involves the following. I'm going to make a common denominator, and then I'm going to get x squared plus 1 over x equals 1. Multiply both sides by x. Everybody knows that x cannot equal 0 here x squared plus 1 equals x, and from here I'm going to get the following equation, which is super duper awesome. Now why is it awesome? First of all, notice that x um, does not equal negative 1. Why did I say that? Because I'm going to take this equation and multiply it by x plus 1. Why am I doing it? Because I want to take advantage of a formula called sum of two cubes. And this gives us 0, because we know that this is 0, this is non-zero, so the answer is 0. Great. So from here we get x cubed equals negative 1. Awesome. And that gives us the following. x to the 7th power becomes x cubed squared times x, but x cubed is equal to negative 1, so when you square negative 1, you're going to get, okay, fine, I'm going to show my work. I know some folks complain that I talk too fast. If I talk too slow, people are going to say, oh, trying to you know, just make the video longer, whatever. Anyways, it's hard to please everyone. So x to the 7th power from here is equal to x. This is awesome. You know why? This is super duper awesome because now it allows you to write this x to the 7th plus 1 over x to the 7th as x plus 1 over x because x to the 7th is equal to x. Take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, and we know that x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. Therefore, the answer is 1. And this brings us to the end of the second method and to, to the beginning of the third method. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the third method real quick so we don't make the video too long. Okay, x plus 1 over x is equal to 1. Now, this approach I particularly like and I believe some of you guys are going to love this method because it uses complex numbers. Yay, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to suppose that x can be written as cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And where does that come from? Well, every real number is a complex number, therefore it can be written as a complex number, and this is the polar form, whatever. So this is, if this is x, the reciprocal of x, after a little bit of algebra and trigonometry, whatever, is going to be cosine alpha minus i sine alpha. And you can easily check that. If you multiply these two together, you're going to get 1 on the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is going to give you from difference of 2 squares, cosine squared minus i squared sine squared alpha, which is cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, which is equal to 1. Yay, I said it. Okay, great. So anyways, you can check that out. But this is beautiful. You know why? When you replace x with cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, and 1 over x with cosine alpha minus i sine alpha, you're going to get something super duper awesome because i sine alpha is going to cancel out. Yay! A real result. Cosine alpha plus cosine alpha is going to be 2 cosine alpha, and from here cosine alpha equals 1 half. Good old 60 degrees, or pi over 3 in radians. I know you guys like radians better than degrees. Okay, great. Now, what is so good about this? Well, Alpha doesn't have to be pi over 3, but let's just take pi over 3. Come on. It works. So how do you raise x to the 7th power so easily? Why did you pick a complex number? Because we have a formula, and I can't pronounce it correctly. Uh, it's De Moivre. De Mo okay, I'm just going to say De Moivre's formula. Whatever. So if you raise it to the 7th power, you see, this is the beauty of complex numbers because you can, like, take a complex number and a bam, you can just raise it to the 7th power like this. And 1 over x to the 7th is obviously 1 over x to the 7th power, and that's just going to be the, what's it called? Conjugate. Awesome. Now, when you add these two together, what's going to happen? This, these guys are going to cancel out again, and you're going to end up with x to the 7th plus 1 over x to the 7th, and from here, you're going to get the cosine 7 alpha twice. Super duper awesome. And this can be generalized, by the way, if you want to evaluate x to the 1nth 
plus 1 over x to the nth, this can definitely be generalized. And this, this is just awesome. Anyways, alpha was pi over 3, so let's go ahead and um, replace um, alpha with pi over 3, 7 times pi over 3, but 7 pi over 3 is greater than 6 pi over 3, come on. So we can write this as, what? We can write this as 2 pi plus pi over 3, and 2 pi is like, you know, 0, you can just totally ignore it. And it just becomes the same thing, cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, so x to the 7 plus 1 over x to the 7, just like x plus 1 over x, becomes 2 times 1 half, which is 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.